Hey, this is Andy from Orbit Media with a quick video showing you how to use Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics to track the viewing of videos on your website. This is not something that analytics tracks by default. By default, analytics tracks only movement from page to page, page view interactions. Because watching a video doesn't change the URL, it doesn't trigger a new page view, it's not tracked by default, and we have to use something called event tracking to set it up. It's really not that hard. We can do it with Google Tag Manager, and this video will show you step by step exactly where to click and how to set up event tracking to track video views within Google Analytics. Here we go. I've already done this on the Orbit account, so I'm going to do this on a client account, but regardless, the idea is the same. Basically, you've got a video embedded into a website, and you want to know if people are engaging with it, how often is it engaged with, what are people doing with this? You want to track that click. So here is Google Tag Manager, and I'm going to begin by going to Variables, and I'm going to configure all the variables that I'll need to begin this tracking. They're all going to be down here under Videos, and you can go ahead and just turn all of these on. We may not use them all, but there's no harm in having them uh, configured. That part is done. Great. Now. The next thing we need to do is to create the tag and the trigger. Usually people create tags and then create the trigger that turns the tag on uh, or fires the tag, but uh, I'm going to make the trigger first in this case. So to do that, I'm going to come up here and click on triggers in the, nap in the menu. Then I'm going to click on new to create a new trigger. And the trigger name will be YouTube video. I'm doing this for YouTube, so I'm just going to call it YouTube video. It's a might be play, might be stop. It's all the things with YouTube video. I'll just leave it generic as, as that. Then I click in this box anywhere in this big box of the, you know, the pencil icon or something. Just click to create the tag or the trigger, and uh, and then there is a built-in trigger right here for me. So all I need to do is to click on YouTube video. There's my trigger. Now start and complete are there by default. You need to have those on. Um, I'm going, you, you can turn the others on as well if you plan to do a little bit more analysis. Uh, percentages um, are a nice way to do this. Time thresholds are another way to do this. Uh, I'm not doing analysis on the duration uh, of views on these videos, uh, but if you wanted to, this would be one way to do it, and this would be the other way to do it. Uh, add JavaScript API tracking for YouTube videos. You can turn that on as well. It's not going to hurt if that's not the mechanism through which you embed YouTube videos. but it doesn't hurt to turn it on. And leave this as DOM ready, DOM ready. That's like document object model ready. In other words, that's when the web page has loaded to the extent that the data layer on the browser is ready to start listening. There's a couple other ways to do it. Just leave it. I recommend leaving it at DOM ready. You could track all the videos or some of the videos. Why not track them all? I see no reason not to. This one, unlike the variables, we have to click save. Click save. Oops. This we did we left empty, so. I'll put that in, 10, uh, well, let's do it this way, 25, 50, 75, and 100. So um, those are my percentages. Great. Okay, next we're going to create the tag. So that kind of closed and went away. Now we're going to create the tag. The tag is similar. We're just going to click New right here, and we're going to give it a meaningful name. Uh, naming conventions are helpful <laughs> because you're not the only person who's ever going to work on this account. This account will maybe outlive you at your company. So I'm going to put, I'm going to give it a sensible name such as GA because it's a Google Analytics tag. Event because that is the type of tag that we're creating here. It's an event. It's not a page view. And uh, I'll call it YouTube because that's what I'm tracking specifically. Next, I'm going to click to create the, to do the tag configuration. Of all the different tag types, we're using this one, which is the Google Analytics Universal Analytics. If you've moved on and you're already using web app and web, that's you're ahead of the game. Good for you. Um, what type of tracking are we doing here? It's event tracking. So I'm going to change that to event tracking. And I'm going to just choose video view as the category name. And action, I can use a pre-built variable, right? We just configured some variables. So for the action here, Let's, use, let's make the action video title. You could make it any of those things. And for the label, I'm going to make it um, video status. You could, again, choose any of these things, whatever you want to track. 
I'll make it video status. Category, action, and label, you have to have these. Um, uh, category and action, I think you must have to, for the event to work and record. Category, action, and label are the three almost standard things that everyone sets up when they set up events. You can also create a value in this case. Um, let's say I want to do some analysis on that view duration. In this case, I can choose video percent because we just set that up in the trigger. Okay, non-interaction hit. By default, it's set to false. In other words, when this event fires, it will be a hit in interaction on the website that will send data to Google Analytics servers. Therefore, it will affect our bounce rate. If you like knowing that, if you like thinking of bounce rate as one page visits, which is a close enough definition, then you should set this to true so that this event does not affect your bounce rates. Non-interaction hit false, this event will affect your bounce rates. If someone lands on one page and watches the video, even though that's a one-page visit, it was a two-hit session. We're not going to do a deep dive here on bounce rates, but I recommend just setting non-interaction hit to true so that this event does not affect your current bounce rates. Um, if you do change that, keep in mind that your bounce rate data will be different before and after this event was created. Uh, that's it. <laughs> now we now all we need to do is to connect it to the trigger. A couple other settings we don't need. To connect it to the trigger. Where's the trigger? It's right there. We already made the trigger. Come up here and click save. We're done. We made the trigger. Oops, I had to select one thing. Oh, this was the um, analytics account. You saw I missed that, so it didn't save. This is the account, um, the, the um, uh, UA tracking uh, code. Okay, great. So here we are, we've got our event. The event is set up. We use Google Tag Manager. We didn't have to pay a programmer to build this event or get an invoice or wait for tech to IT to set it up for us. It's all set up. The last step is to submit this container. So we have to click Submit so that that container is now um, going to be the live container on the website. We're not like in a workspace. This is going to go live. So the version name is going to be, I'm going to make it meaningful, um, YouTube video tracking and uh, a description, added event tracking for YouTube videos. Good enough. Excellent. Publish. Okay, now I've already had this event set up on my own website, so I'm going to show you how it's tracked um, in a real world case. So, and I'm going to do it for this video right here. I want to see if this video was watched, what percentage of people watch it, what's the difference between people who watch it and people that don't. To do that, I'm going to look just at this URL because this is the URL with that video. In that case, I'm going to go to Site Content, All Pages, and I'm going to filter once again, filter to look at just that page. And here is the page itself. When I drill down here to click just to see that URL, it's going to show me all the engagement metrics for them. Now I want to look at the people who watched the video and people who didn't watch the video. Those are groups of people. In other words, those are audiences. In other words, those are segments. So I'm going to create quick segments to help me see these people separately. Because the event is set up, uh, it's very uh, easy to segment people based on that event. So to create, a, to create segments, you just click up here. I'm going to click to add a segment. It's a new segment. Uh, it's a conditional segment. This is almost the only type of segment I create is this conditional segment, which is an easy one. And I want to include just these two types, either the visitors or the visits. In other words, the users or the sessions. I want to look at, this, at the visits, so we'll leave that as, as um, sessions. So uh, when it includes event uh, category, I think we said was video view. It's going to pre-populate it for us. And this is just going to show me those people. Immediately it's going to show, even before I save it, it's going to give me value over here and tell me the percentage. Um, sometimes I make segments just to see this number over here even without saving the segment. So I'm going to call these video watchers and I'm going to save it. And now I've got a segment that shows me video watchers and they're going to appear uh, down here. Now I want to make another segment to see the people that don't watch. Click add a segment, new segment. It's almost the same. Conditions, sessions, when they exclude event category contains video view. This of course is going to be a much larger percentage the other group. 
So these are called video no watchers, I'll call them, just for fun. I like to put video at the front, makes it easy to scan when I'm looking at a list of segments. Um, naming conventions are helpful. <laughs> so here's my other segment. And now this shows me them separately. Um, I'm going to see them as two different types of people. I'm going to see all the data in the data view down here below. Uh, put the orange line on top, that looks a little weird. Let's flip these. Um, it's going to show me the, uh, the difference between these two types of people. The no watchers versus the watchers. Okay. Right away I can begin to do the math. To keep it interesting, I'm going to switch to the landing pages view because I want to see uh, the data for when this was the first page that people visited. Uh, it's going to give me a better sense for uh, engagement because this person had the strong intent of engaging with this particular piece of content. So I'm over here and I'm filtering this to just see that one piece of content. We'll drill right into it to see it so that this is uh, the only URL on this report. And uh, I'm going to expand the date range to go back to a few months back when I created this, uh, this actual uh, event. And here we go. Now I am able to do the analysis on the difference between these two types of visitors. Looks like it was a little bit later. So what is the difference between people who watch and people who don't watch? The difference in engagement, the difference in conversion. Here we go. So it looks like uh, about 10% uh, of people are watching. You can see right there, there's the difference between watchers and no watchers. That's the raw number of people who triggered that event of the play button. Now I can see the, uh, the bounce rate for these people. Looks like people who watch the video are maybe 20% less likely to bounce. Very interesting, very useful. Uh, you can, so I'm getting an idea for the benefit on uh, dwell time if this visitor came from search or you know, trying to keep people on the site. And how long do they spend on the site? They spend about four times as long if they watch the video. Massive impact uh, of this video on that, um, uh, on that metric. And as far as the impact on conversions, looks like these people are about five times as likely to take an action and either become a lead or subscribe to the newsletter. Several different conversion opportunities on our website, but um, look at the conversion rate. Uh, it's north of 1% for the people who watch the video. It's about 0.2% uh, uh, for people that don't watch the video. And so the next level of analysis now would be, how can we get these videos viewed more often? Maybe a better custom thumbnail would increase the view rate. I could see if that would work. I could make a new thumbnail and check to see if it would work. Or maybe there are other low engagement pages with low conversion rates that would benefit from a video. Exactly which page would get the biggest bang for the buck. Another idea, are these videos working in general? What was the investment? Like how much sense does this make? Are people even viewing them? Uh, should I keep doing it? Maybe this, are these being watched more on the platform of YouTube or on the company website? Now you'll know. All of it's possible now that you did that little bit of event tracking, set it up in Google Tag Manager, and now you can see all that data in Google Analytics. We hope this was helpful. If you know someone else who has Google uh, YouTube videos on their website but is not tracking them, feel free to pass this along. Um, and uh, we'll keep making these videos if you want more of this type of content. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, head over to orbitmedia.com where on the blog you'll find tons more stuff like this. Again, Andy from Orbit Media. See you next time.